Well, let's get more analysis and we can speak now to Simon Clark, Associate Professor in Cellular Microbiology at Reading University in the United Kingdom. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us. We've been talking a lot about the race to find a vaccine during the course of the last few days. There's the Oxford University trials, trials in China and the US, and then there's this uh, Pfizer-BioNTech uh, trials. And Which of them all sounds the most promising to you? Well, the Oxford and the Chinese vaccines are furthest ahead in their development. There is a standard way of, of developing and testing any medicine or vaccine as it goes through uh, the system in a phase of three clinical trials. And the, the um, Oxford trial and the, uh, the uh, Sinovac, I think it's called Chinese trial, are, are, are furthest ahead. They've cleared their phase one hurdle and they've got the bigger two and three phases to, uh, to get through now. In order to do that, they need to be where the virus is. They need to demonstrate that they can uh, uh, inhibit the spread of the virus. So that's why we're seeing a lot of the clinical trials being done in places like Brazil and South Africa. So realistically, when do you think the process of actually vaccinating people on a massive scale could, could begin then? Well, if they work, and it is a big if, these things can uh, fail and do fail at any stage in their development. I'll remind you that over 90% of all vaccines that are developed don't make it to the clinic. So if a vaccine gets to the clinic, I think realistically the very earliest we're looking at in Europe anyway is um, probably around Easter time of next year. That's absolutely um, the earliest, I think. Yeah, and if it happens by Easter of next year, let's say in, in Q1, the, end, the beginning of Q2, it will have been an extremely accelerated process. And doesn't that therefore mean that certain stages have been missed and that therefore the vaccine could carry risks? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, no, they've just compressed the, uh, the normal trial period. Uh, you get the, the, the vaccine put through the same number of people um, in the same way. It's perhaps just been done in a more f uh, condensed time frame. But to suggest that corners have been cut, uh, I don't think that will happen. I hope it won't happen. It shouldn't do. Um, we've seen uh, in the past vaccines be rushed through rather quickly and not, not have much of an effect. So, um, you know, if, if there is a vaccine that's produced that doesn't do anything, that still gets put into people, it will get found out pretty quickly because it won't have any effect. Indeed. So you're not concerned about the safety of it. And just lastly, I mean, have you got any theories of your own? Uh, you are, after all, a microbiologist, you know, about the virus, uh, anything you've learned about it during these last few months and, and perhaps anything about how it can be treated or prevented? Your, your thoughts? Well, we're learning, uh, doctors are learning all the time, better ways of treating uh, people who are seriously ill. And we've seen a number of drugs that are commonly used in medicine, things like dexamethasone and remdesivir, which is perhaps not so commonly used in medicine, but these are drugs designed or, or used over a longer period of time for other things that can be adapted for COVID-19. And I think there will be other drugs that come along and fit that niche. So things we've already got in the medicine cabinet, the doctors will be able to bring out, and they will be able to show that at various stages of the disease and various severities, that these drugs work. So I think in treating the symptoms is where, in, in, in the very shortest term, very shortest time frame, we will see the biggest effect. OK, well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Microbiologist Simon Clark at Reading University. Thank you very much indeed.